see. So if I click this. Oh, hey, I'm going to pretend I didn't know there was a camera there. Welcome to my shop. Uh, this is another installment in Tim and Vance's uh, most excellent CNC adventure. And um, this one is going to be maybe a little bit boring for some people, but I've already had a lot of questions about the software in it. Because really, that's kind of the most daunting part for a lot of makers and woodworkers is is getting doing the computer work to make this computerized machine run. This video is going to show how I screwed up one simple function <laughs> and then did another one uh, correctly, uh, showing the, the way I set up the software, what went right, what went wrong. It's a little bit long. If you're already a CNC user, you're going to find this kind of boring, so just don't worry about it. But if you're, if you're interested in learning this stuff, this is going to help answer a lot of questions for you, kind of pull the curtain back a little bit on some of what goes on. So please enjoy, and uh, thanks for watching. Next video coming up in this series is going to be something really cool and interactive, so um, I'm looking forward to that, and I think you're going to dig it. Have a good one. Air guitar. Yep. What I need to do is I need to draw two crosses. I actually downloaded a picture off the internet already. I need to make two gothic crosses for this prop I'm making. Um, so I'm going to create a new file. Uh, this is the maximum size of the piranhas, 12 by 13. I want to cut this out of 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm going to set my zero at the bottom for that, which is what you're supposed to do when you're cutting all the way out. Import a bitmap for tracing. I'm going to choose this one because we're just looking for the outline. So, to double click it to move it or whatever, I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, I actually feel like that's just a little too close to the edge. I'm not sure what would happen. I'm going to have a substrate underneath. Actually, yes, it'll be all right. Okay, so there's my cross. Now what I need to do is I need to turn this into a vector, into something that the CNC machine will understand. And what I want the CNC machine to do is just simply cut out the edge of it. Not complicated. So now I'm going to... Uh, I just don't remember where anything ever is right now. Let me... Oh, this one, the little bird. Trace bitmap. Fit vectors to selected bitmap. So I click on the little bird guy. And I think I have this all sort of just middle of the road set up. And this is pretty simple. It's just black and white, so it should work pretty easily. And there we go. I can see my outline is there as I want it. I'm going to apply it. Close. So now we have created this purple line here, which is going to be what we cut out. So we'll switch to toolpath, which is this one. Boop. Now this guy opens up. We're going to go on to this... Well, first we're going to check our material so to make sure it's all good. When we're cutting all the way out, we want to set our zero at the bottom of the piece. Gap above model, 0.75 inches, uh, clearance, that's so the tool can move around. That all looks good. It's from where I had it before that worked. I'm going to do a profile toolpath. This means I will cut it out. My start depth is zero. I'm assuming that's all correct. My tool is this 0.1875 N-mill. Um, six passes seems a little bit much. Maybe we'll just do... I don't want to cut too much at once. Five, yeah, I think four passes. That seems pretty good four times around to do it. Okay, and then we're going to go over here. We want to cut on the outside of the line. Um, there's this little do last pass thing that kind of makes it so all your cuts are a little bit further outside the line, but then the last pass is just right up against it so you get a nice smooth edge. You don't see any separation of the passes. So we'll do that. Uh, I don't think we need to add any we could do a lead in and a lead out, like that. Might make it a little cleaner. Um, I don't know what. I think all this stuff is fine. I don't think we really have to do anything with that. Now, hopefully, this bit's going to be able to do. Like you see this little point here, that might get a little tight for our bit. So we'll have to see what it sort of looks like. 
select all of this and calculate. And then we can actually see what it's going to look like. We'll slow it down a little bit and watch what will happen. So you see our bit's going to start here and follow this red line and then it's going to go in right there and let's see what happens. It makes one, two, three, four passes. And you can see the corners here are a little rounded over, but I'm okay with that. It still has the same basic shape and that looks like a gothic cross. So let's go for it. Let's um, close this and then we will save this toolpath as cross outline save the file as cross outline oh sorry you can, this has to be a short name to be read on the little touch screen so we'll go cross uh geez, C -R -S -O -U -T, because i had some other stuff and we will save this into our vcarb docs.tap files save all right, now we have actually done all that we need to do. We're ready to start being a woodworker again. So I'm going to take my flash drive and plug it in. I have a piece of MDF to use as a surface to cut into in case my bit goes too far so I don't cut up my, my board. Now I'm going to cut out this cross shape. And what's going to happen is on that final pass, it's going to come loose. So while I'm going to have my work clamped down, this part could come loose right at the end. So I used two-sided tape one time. This time I'm going to try the spray adhesive and see if that works. Yeah, that worked pretty good. So what I just did like a total idiot is I loaded the wrong file. I had two files that I was working on uh, for crosses. One was going to be like a reverse thing and uh, and I just clicked the wrong one like a total moron. So I'm going to flip this wood over and, uh, and cut the cross out on the other side. I think it'll be fine. Looks like it hit my clamp. I take that back. Apparently the problem is I need to come forward on this board because I'm reaching the max at the back. So it actually goes off the board this way. Let me set the camera up for this. This is pretty important to note. I looked at this board, this layout here, and I assumed that the X and Y motion would all happen within the board. It actually comes forward a little bit. I can start cutting as soon as here, like an inch of an overhang, which is probably set up that way for dropping the thing down or whatever, I don't know. But so that's sort of our maximum there. So what was happening is, is I had this piece too far back. I couldn't, the, the gantry couldn't go back far enough to make my cuts and it stopped and stalled out and then it messed up all its calculations. So I'm actually gonna have to, since I'm using the full length of this, this piece, I'm actually gonna have to set my work up so it's hanging over the edge just a little bit. I'm going to clamp it from the back. I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't go and check my parameters sooner. It does seem like a logical thing to do. So now you can see what happens is when I set this up again, I was just back a little too far and right here it reached the end of its path and I heard it go eh, for just a second and it threw it off. It's tough to see. Right here you can see how those two crosses are not totally in sync. It pushed it off by just a little tiny millimeter. But what that does is it pushes the entire thing off. 
by that measurement. So now this is going to go around and cut some more, everything's going to be off. So even if you could live with that little discrepancy, it's too late, man. The computer just, there's no room for error with computers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the computer and I'm just going to size this down about a half inch so I'm not pushing these, these boundaries so tight. So now to amuse myself and try something different, I had this other picture of a cross that was more complicated. Uh, I sized down my, my square to 12 by 12, so it gives me a little bit of extra space on either side to mess up. <laughs> so I think we're just going to do that. I'm going to call the, the cut size 12 by 12, even though the uh, catalog says 12 by 13, and that'll just save me this trouble. So now with this one, obviously I can't cut all this out. It's like this sort of ornate and intricate thing, but I just did the same procedure, and I turned it into a vector or, or whatever, um, and maybe what we'll try doing is carving it out of this piece of wood and then placing the carving uh, on it. Um, let's see what happens if we... Do some kind of V carve with a. We'll use that bit because I have it. And uh, let's see what this looks like. Well, it claims it's going to give us that much detail. Uh, in one pass. And then what I could do is I could cut this out on the uh, bandsaw or maybe I could cut it into like a like a pyramid shape and stick it on the thing I gotta stick it on. I don't know, I think that looks pretty awesome. I have, I, I find it hard to believe that it's gonna look that awesome with me trying to run all this stuff. But let's give it a try. Um, let's go to this, it will save this. And we'll call this uh, ornate, maybe we'll call it.